Hey, so you're looking for a computer, you need to figure out what components matter when you're looking for a machine to run Fusion 360, SolidWorks, Inventor, what runs those design tools the best, and what do you care about? Coming up. Hey, Tyler back with Tech and Espresso. Today we're talking about the main components that you need to look at when you're looking at getting a new machine. We're gonna talk about processor, memory, the graphics card, those are key. But before we do that, you got to decide laptop or a tower desktop. So for me, it's kind of a no brainer. I have to travel to visit customers sometimes, I have to go to different you know places in the office, and I just like to be able to work in different parts of my house. So the portability is key for my main machine. So it's a laptop for me. That being said, I love desktops. I love how much power you get for your money and that they're easier to upgrade. And now with all the all-in-ones where you get a really nice monitor and nice hardware with it, those are cool options too. But for me, portability is key. So I'm looking at a laptop, but let's talk about the components. Let's talk about the processor. Okay, so when it comes to picking your processor, there's a couple things you'll notice. One is the processor or clock speed, and then the other is the number of cores that it can utilize and that it's able to run. Now, CAD and design software, uh, for the most part, is going to be reliant on that one main core, and that's where clock speed or the speed of the processor is king. So, that's definitely that number that you should be looking at first is how fast is it? So let's take a look at the system requirements that Fusion 360 suggests. So first thing we'll be looking at, obviously they're saying get a current operating system. So Windows 8 or Windows 10, um, and then the, as well as the Mac OS's to be, that you'll need to be able to run. And so here we have the baseline for the core. So they're saying four cores, and there's that clock speed, a 1.7 gigahertz or greater. If we scroll down, we'll notice they actually take it a little bit further and they say, here's some ideal specs if you're doing complex models or you're having to do more processing like running CAM tool paths. So they're calling for three gigahertz or greater with six or more cores. Running out to a place like Geekbench, you can get a look at how the different processors out there, current processors are scoring for their single core speed score along with their multi-score. So of course, you know, with Fusion, you'll want to gravitate towards the single core score. Ideally, you're getting something that's scoring well on both spectrums, but of course, the single core score related to your overall clock speed and its performance is something to be looking at first. For a little bit more perspective, if we jump out and look at the SOLIDWORKS requirements or hardware requirements, and um, they're calling for a little bit more, calling for a 3.3 gigahertz processor. And then on the RAM side, they're actually asking for 16 gigabytes, a little bit more, and calling out one of my favorite things, solid state drives. This is one of the biggest improvements I've experienced using a solid state drive instead of a regular hard drive will improve your read and write times. And generally, it just feels a lot faster to me. My boot up is fast and my application processing is fast. I love having solid state drives and I like having more than one in my laptop. Coming back to Fusion, they're mentioning that eight gigs of RAM um, as a minimum. So don't get stuck on the RAM, invest as much as you can afford in your budget with for the a good processor and now a good graphics card. Let's jump into that. So a quick scan of the Geekbench browser benchmarks, you can start to get a feel for how things are scoring um, on these dedicated graphics cards. So I scroll down, I, have, I find an old gaming card, the GTX 1080 that I've had in previous machines that ran really well. Scroll up and find the RTX 5000 it is in my current Dell machine that they gave me to try out. And that Quadra RTX 5000, of course, is scoring really well, really high on the chart. Now, what they mentioned was a there's integrated graphics cards that can work right on your graphics, right in your laptop. 
but there's also dedicated graphics cards and that's what we're looking at and they're saying a four gigabyte minimum so if we go out and take a look maybe at some used dell machines um, that are for sale and start trying to start and work our way up um here is a current you know processor an i5 that looks like it's got enough speed and it's got quad core so this should run fusion well um got a solid state drive yep that's a win i love that eight gigs of ram that's right at the minimum and then it's supporting up to 1080 hd um, for the screen and it has uh, a geforce gtx 1650 four gigabytes of dedicated um, ram and memory for the ram now this is an incredibly inexpensive machine and a great place to start it's a gaming machine but this should run fusion pretty well now on the other end of the spectrum you have a precision workstation from dell so these precision units are made for professional creators and, and engineers, you know, for applications like we're talking about Fusion 360 SOLIDWORKS and then all those um, video editing challenges that I face in using Adobe products like Adobe Premiere and After Effects. And what you get with this is a machine that's just designed to work at this high end. Um, some of the things that you are getting, you know, where are you getting an Intel Xeon or a nice Intel Core i9. Um, in my case, um, I have this Intel Xeon and an NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000. I have 60 gigabytes, 64 gigabytes of RAM and two solid state drives. And this RTX Quadro card is certified with SolidWorks, which just kind of eliminates some of the challenges so that you know for sure you're going to get solid performance from your graphics card. Thanks to Dell for gifting me this new Precision 7750 workstation that I've been testing over the last few months. And it has been the most powerful machine that I've ever owned. And where I've seen it perform well and why I care about such impressive specs is when I have to do anything, any kind of simulations, cam pass, renderings, anything that leverages those multiple cores, when I'm doing patterns in Fusion 360 or CAD modeling that just can be kind of cumbersome. And then when I'm opening and running SOLIDWORKS and having to open really large assemblies to simplify them and show those off um, in the many different demonstrations I have to do um, for the software company that I work for. And then not to mention all of the different video editing, After Effects, animations that I have to create that I'm able to render so much faster. I'm just able to do more with my day with this powerhouse laptop on my desk. All right, to summarize the video, pick that laptop or desktop, make that decision. Check out those three main components, make a decision around your processor, your memory and your graphics card. And don't forget to look for an, a solid state drive. It's gonna increase your speed and experience dramatically. And one final thought, be sure to future-proof. Will the components you're buying still be relevant, still be useful a year from now, two years from now? That's why I try to buy a little bit more than the bare minimum specs of what I'm trying to get so that in general, I'll get a better return on my investment. Check out the resources linked down below where you can find different benchmarks and tools for finding the best value hardware. I'll see you in the next video.